So, okay, hopefully it will work. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry. It was tested before, but um, yes. Um, the um, current area of digitalization brings us to a point where we just were uh, not using any more those old fashioned angiography. And we are able to treat every complex uh, patient and pathology in, in every, nearly every age. And I think with the integration of 3D, it's a possibility to improve also our outcome, but most likely our planning of the procedure. And in this regard, the uh, integration of 3D imaging is a, is a current tool and it's a really important tool for us before we do the intervention to clarify what's, what's the patient's need and maybe also our strategy in regard to uh, what material we need, what's the length of the balloon or of the stand, uh, what is the length of the lesion and what branches do we have to take care of and uh, all the things around this intervention area. Can we really pre-adjust it with this 3D imaging including uh, the measurements? Um, First of all, if we talk about image fusion, uh, the integration of this 3D picture was done by 3DRA, which is a rotational angio, which is used in the cath lab as if the patient is already on the table. And, and it's a rotation of most likely one arm of the, of the uh, machine. And it's, it's near around 200 degree uh, picture of the patient. And in the cath lab, it's, it's looking like that. But the, you have to be aware of all the, if you have a biplane machine, you have to be aware of the other arm. But then if you can rotate, the patient is lying on the table and the arm is rotating on that. And um, this is the picture which we get out of it. And I think it's really important to see that it is a lot of pictures which is taken. So it's, it's a numerous uh, series of radiation also used for that 3D picture. And um, I think it's, it's a beneficial thing in regard that if you have stands overlapping structures, if you have uh, borderline cases where you may need the get, to get the full picture of the interventional region before you do or even afterwards you do. In regard, if you placed already a stand, and if you have uh, maybe number of stands, it's, it's also you get artifacts in your imaging modalities. It's regardless if it's CT, if it's MRI, and I think for those purposes, the 3DRA is a really good thing to, to really have a clear picture of the stent integrity and maybe also of the next intervention which has been taken in this patient. So artifacts is, are uh, not in the 3DRA. And again, if you rotate your patient, you will see that maybe you will miss the picture at that area where you have your pathology in regard to aneurysm, our aneurysm detection, or even size. So you have a clear picture if you have this rotation and you have the uh, reconstructed picture in your cath lab then. This can be, as I, as I was telling you, integrated in your uh, interventional strategy. So you can use this 3DRA in regard to overlay it in your fluoroscopy and you let you guide this picture, let will guide you during the intervention, most likely just to see if you're in the border or if you're at the, at the uh, uh, area where you wanted to go, or even if you stay off the branches which you, where you don't want to put a stand in or a balloon or whatever. Um, another picture would be, or another uh, topic would be ecofusion. Ecofusion is also possible now in the CAS lab. You have to have a clear uh, modality for that. It's, it's a possibility of the 3D uh, probe, and it's TOE most likely which is then integrated in your, echo, in your fluoroscopy picture. The really important thing is that it is not possible with the pediatric probe so far. And the other thing is that it is uh, um, also something which you have to learn in regard to, to let you guide your intervention. Most likely, reports on that is about atrial interventions, mean, means like you puncture the atrial or do EP studies or closure of the atrial septal defects. And, um, for us in our center, it's not a really clear implication for that because we just do it by echo only. So we don't need fluoroscopy in the ASD patients. But um, Tom Fagan did some work on that and I think he was uh, telling us that it is a good integration and it's giving a good orientation if you do atrial interventions. But he also stated that if, if we talk about RV or PA chondrites, 
it's a clear limited uh, tool to use for fusion because it's not really easy to access the pulmonary artery region for the echo in that regard, and especially then to fuse those pictures. So that's why I think for pulmonary valve implantation or uh, valvulations, it's not a thing which you can use quite easily, but maybe in the future it's, it will show. So we use, like as you see here, transthoracic echo in order to, to clarify the function of the valve, which is the most important thing. MRI and fusion with fluoroscopy is also described earlier. They did some interventional studies on that in 2009, and they tried to um, impose those pictures on the fluoroscopy. And, and nowadays, it's a possibility to use a more modern thing, and it's a really it's a commercial available thing, but it's, it, uh, it's a nice program which you can use. It was Heart Navigator and Vessel Navigator is it now. It's really depending what you're doing, heart valve interventions or vessel interventions. Um, it's a possibility of fusion of MRI imaging in your fluoroscopy. And how is it done? I, I think most of you may, may not know. It's just that we need the DICOM data. Uh, DICOM data is imported inside the CAS lab at the workstation. The MRI data is uh, fixed. Most likely it's a 3D data set, 3D whole heart which then is implicated in the machine. And you can see it here, that you just uh, have the data set then, have the 3D data set, and they will then segment your area of interest, like the pulmonary vessels, the right ventricle, the aorta, whatever you like, you can just adjust it here. And then you can place landmarks like rings, which you just need to know may, may, maybe for a definition of the proximal and the distal part of your stenosis, and uh, may also go for uh, marking those uh, other vessels in regard to, to C and for calibration use. And you can differentiate with these colors there, and you can also mark your coronaries to, to stay off them during the intervention. And if you have done this, you can see the whole picture of your interventional strategy maybe, and you can also prove if it's possible to do this in this patient and you have a clear picture of all the area around your interventional area. And you can also most likely see if, if the size is adjustable and your intervention strategy will also may address the stenotic region or even in this patient just in is insufficient valve region. And um, if you have done this, um, may, the major topic for interventional pulmonary valve implantation is maybe the coronaries. And I will talk later on this uh, symposium about the coronaries, so that's why I skipped this. But as you can see here, you have maybe a clear impression. And you can see in this patient that the right coronary may stay off all the time, but the left coronary may cause, may uh, be of interest in regard to your intervention. And you can really see how it is running below the pulmonary artery region and pulmonary outflow tract in regard that you need to know if you expand this valve region maybe, how is it addressing and how is it affecting your coronary artery, most likely the left in this patient. So the fusion then is just to have the 3D images at your fluoroscopy and you just, in the beginning we did angiography for calibration. Nowadays I think it is possible also just to put the catheters inside the aorta and the pulmonary artery and just to address the correct area of overlapping in this in these two dimensions. You need to have a, a degree, a 35 or 30, minimum 30 degree uh, difference in the AP plane, just switch it over and, to, uh, and do the two uh, fluoroscopy pictures there and then address your 3D image over your fluoroscopy, which is most likely your catheters or your angiography. And if you have done this, then the 3D picture will move with your intervention. And you can see here, for pulmonary valve implantation, I think you can mark your left and right pulmonary artery, you can mark your stenotic region for pre-stenting, and also to control your intervention strategy in regard to how far will you go, how big will you go, and uh, let's stay off the branches. Afterwards, it's completely continuing your fusion, uh, so it's continue guiding you through the intervention, and even afterwards you see that with the change of the area, of the stenotic area in the valve region, it is still completely the same picture if it's really accurate in regard to the overlay. 
And what's, what else is possible is just to do the diagnostic categorization just without using any contrast application in this patient. So if you have an overlay adjusted to the catheter position on fluoroscopy, you can just do all the measurements, doing, going through all the hard per, uh, regions, and just do the pressure measurements before you have done any contrast application in this patient. So this is possible. We do it in, especially in patients where we don't want to use contrast most likely, just maybe just pulmonary pressure uh, uh, measurements or testing, so it's possible without contrast uh, in the nowadays. CT integration, it's a little better picture in regard to MRI because MRI is really depending on the quality of picture. CT is most likely a good quality of picture, but it is radiation. And you can see it's automatically uh, uh, cutting off the, uh, the bones, and then you have your uh, 3D picture, and then you cut off all the things which you're not interested in, you see it on the right side. And then you have your uh, full picture of a patient, like this patient, where we did a pulmonary valve implantation already. We intended to do a tricuspid valve implantation also because the tricuspid valve was also affected. We did it in, in two steps. And I think this is a really good uh, picture for telling you how important it is to integrate this uh, for your strategy or for your interventional uh, strategy. And um, we did a measurement on CT, which is a valve ring of this valve in around 22 to 24 millimeters. And you can see in CT picture here, it is quite nearly good to identify where the valve is. But then, afterwards, we see the fluoroscopy, and it was really hard to find the tricuspid valve. It was a bi biological valve, but you can see here, it's really hard to find where the valve region is. And you remember the CT images was clearly nicely to define where the valve region is, but in this fluoroscopy, it was really difficult to see. So we did an angio, as you can see here, and you might know now where the valve region of the tricuspid valve is. It's, it's, a, it's a really uh, bright ring, maybe, but it's really hard to identify because you don't have any markers of this valve. And then we did the overlay, which, is, which was done by CT, and tells you where the valve ring is. I, I did two markers just around the valve, as you can see, the, 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 the blue or the green rings there. And then it was uh, nicely to guide the interventional valve implantation in this patient. Because uh, I did an angio, and as also it was not clear, and clearly to refine by angio only to see where the valve region is. And in regard to, to this overlay, which was, which was on the screen, not on this screen, but on the other screen here, it was possible to see and to put the valve in. Um, Sebastian Gorgny has uh, done some tremendous work on image fusion and uh, image integration in cath lab. And I think he also uh, um, summarized some of this uh, experience already in his, in his center on, on pulmonary valve implantations. And he compared this with the 3DRA, and he was telling us that the radiation and contrast exposure is decreased with this integration, but he did CT. He, not, he didn't uh, use MRI integration so far. And um, in regard to, to what we see, that the um, integration of MRI, CT, or 3DRA may be different, we, we did start in multi-center multi registry in regard to that to, to find out what's the difference and what's maybe the implication and benefits. And we did a sum analysis already showing that MRI integration is the most beneficial thing in regard to radiation. So uh, you can decrease your radiation in regard that you use MRI for integration in your pulmonary valve implantation patients or even in every other patient. So in conclusion, image fusion of 3D picture or 3D modalities is a really, really useful tool in order to guide your interventional threat strategy and your intervention. It's prior the catheterization identifies your optimal angulation and your optimal angiographic picture of the patient and also may be used for diagnostic catheterization without contrast exposure. Um, for identification of your landing zone and the definition of the, of the area which you wanted to do, it's really useful and it's also enhancing a precise or precise stand positioning and implantation. The reduction of radiation is really something which we have to find out and have to clarify, but we are on the way and I think it's really important. So just, just a little outlook. I think what we wish 
or what, what our wishes would be that we have a possibility also to simulate our intervention, maybe with the stents we implant, with the valves we implant. And as you can see here, this is for Tavi also already done. You have a, a, a choice of valves which you can impose in your uh, 3D picture in the cast lab on site and may interfere with the, with the stand region, with the stand size and may have a good picture of your intervention before you do it and may correct it before you put the stand in in regard to all the things which you have to consider, stand for shortening, stand size, stand material. So that's what we try to do maybe in the future, just impose our intervention before we do it and have a good clear picture. And uh, after this, I would like to thank you for your attention.